In our last video, I took a look at four different ways that companies may opt to keep track of their inventory. We talked about FIFO, first in, first out, LIFO, last in, first out, the weighted average method, and as well we touched on the specific unit identification method which is more for big ticket items. Now I mentioned that specific unit ID because it's for big ticket items and you tend to be tracking one item at a time doesn't make for good accounting questions and so I, I'm not going to ask one and I'm not going to practice one uh, in these videos. Uh, LIFO method isn't allowed under Canadian accounting rules and under international accounting rules, although it is allowed in uh, the United States. Uh, therefore, the next two videos are really going to hone in on examples of dealing with the FIFO method and the weighted average method. So this video is all about FIFO. Uh, let's take a look at the example of this situation. We're just going to track this company's inventory using first in, first out, or the FIFO method. So it says, here are the inventory records of XYZ Company for the month of August, and you can see they have a beginning balance, they make a purchase, a sale, another purchase, another sale, and we just want to keep track of their inventory using first in, first out. Um, so we're going to do part A now, record all the journal entries using the FIFO method, and part B later, record all the journal entries using the weighted average method. Um, so uh, to do uh, this and to keep track of inventory, I've encouraged my class to learn to use one of these. Uh, this is called an inventory record and it's just a way of keeping track of your inventory. Very good chance you'll have seen something like this in your class, but if not, I, I think it's going to be very clear uh, how to deal with it. So there's three key sections to this. Uh, the section I've just highlighted in red is going to keep track of our purchases of inventory. The section I'm going to highlight here in yellow keeps track of any sales we make. Uh, and it keeps track of our cost of goods sold. And the final column, perhaps the most important, I'll highlight in orange there, is like a running total of our inventory. So keep track of what's going on in our inventory. So without any further ado, uh, let's get started. Our beginning balance in inventory on August 1st was 15 units that cost us $100 each. So 15 units at $100 is $1,500 in inventory. Now I should date this. I'm going to date it August 1st. I've got to say to myself, did I make a purchase? Nope. Did I make a sale? Nope. I just have an inventory balance. I have 15 units at $100 each. I have $1,500 worth of inventory. Uh, so that's the first one in the back. August 17th, I make a purchase. 35 units at $90 each. So on August 17th, I'm going to note that I have a purchase. 35 units at $90 each. Now 35, 35 times 90, I'm using a new keyboard today, is $3,150. And actually, let me just draw a line underneath this. I want to keep each line separate. So, on my previous date, on August 1st, I had 15 units, $100. I've got to ask myself the question now. I'm doing a running total. I had 15 at 100. Do I still have 15 at 100? The answer is yes. I didn't sell them, so I still have those units sitting around. 15 at 100 for 1,500. Now, I've just added to that 35 at 90 for 3,150. Now, I've got to tell you. The first time I did this, when I was a student, I would always want to add these together. If you're doing FIFO or LIFO, don't mix your inventory. Just say, okay, I've got 15 at 100 and 35 at 90, and that's it. So that's it. Whenever you make a purchase, just add it onto the list. Now, on August 23rd, we make a sale. August 23rd, we sell. Oops wrong one. Uh, we sell 30 units at a price of 150 bucks a unit. So I'm going to sell 30 units. Now I notice this is about cost of goods sold, this column. It's not about price. It's about how much the stuff cost. So what we've actually got to say is, okay, we sold 30 units. Which 30 did I sell? And the answer to that question is, well, we're doing FIFO first in, first out, so I must have sold my oldest units first. Uh, my oldest units are these 15 at 
Well, if I sold 30, I must have sold all of those, 15 and 100 for 1,500. And then, again, I sold 30, so I must have sold 15 more, and they must have been 15 of the $90 units. And 15 at 90 is $1,350. Now, I had 15 at 100, I sold 15 at 100, it means I have zero left. I'm, I'm gonna do my inventory total now. I have zero left at 100. Uh, I had 35 at 90, and now I've sold 15 of the $90 units, leaving me 20 $90 units sitting around, unsold. If you can understand this line, you can understand the FIFO method. You just look at what you had in inventory, and you say, which units did I sell? So our company had 50 units to sell. We sold 30 of them. Now we just got to say, what are our oldest 30 units? Must have been 15 at 100 because those are the oldest. And then the rest come from the uh, more recent uh, $90 units. So again, if you've understood that well, FIFO is no problem for you. Let's continue though. On August 25th, we make a purchase. We purchased just 10 units at 87 bucks. So 10 at 87 is $870 worth of inventory. Now I say to myself, well, what's my total in inventory? Well, I had 20 at 90. I still have 20 at 90. I didn't sell them. So I carry that number forward. I'm adding to it 10 at 87 for 870. And again, I make no attempt to total. I make no attempt to mix those numbers because under FIFO or LIFO, I just need to keep track of them. I don't need to add them up. So, oops, I always do that. On August 31st, I sell 24 units. So again, even though the question tells me I sold 24 for 150 bucks, that doesn't interest me. The sales price is not an interesting thing to me. I'm interested in how much they cost, and to figure out how much they cost, I gotta figure out which 24 units did I sell. If I sold 24 units, I must have sold all the old ones. I must have sold all 20 at 90 for 1800 bucks, and I must have sold an additional four at 87, and four times 87 is $348. That leaves me with six units at 87 bucks each. Six times 87 is $522. Now at this point, I'm complete. My, my inventory record for August is done, uh, but I haven't answered the question. The question said, give me journal entries. I wanna see journal entries for August 17th, the 23rd, the 25th, and the 31st. So let's go ahead and give journal entries for the 17th, 23rd, 25th, and 31st. Um, I'll just do them on this page. Let me just uh, clean out the uh, formatting here. I want no borders and I want white. There we go. So on August 17th, you can see that we bought some inventory. It was a purchase of inventory of 3150 worth of inventory. Again, we purchased uh, 35 units, 90 bucks, and 35 times 90 is 3150. Now, there's no journal entry for August 1st. That's a beginning balance. It's a balance forward. We only make journal entries for purchases and sales here. So let's make a, a journal entry for that purchase. On August 17th, I'm going to debit inventory for 3150. And let's assume we did it for cash. I'll credit cash for 3150. Again, it could just as easily have been accounts payable. Uh, so that's August 17th in the bag. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to just wipe that off. Uh, let's do August 23rd. August 23rd, when I make a sale of inventory, I'm always thinking it's of double entries. We're going to get money from our customer, and we're going to credit sales revenue. We're also going to debit cost of goods sold, or COGS, and we're going to credit our inventory. So I got to figure out how much money I got from my customers. Well, if I sold, and this is August 23rd's journal entry, if I sold 30 units at a price of $150, 
I must have gotten 30 times 150, $4,500 from my customers. So again, equals 30 times 150. I received $4,500 in cash and sales revenue. Now, how much is my cost of goods sold on August 23rd? Well, you just look at your inventory record and you say cost of goods sold is 1500 and 1350 it's 2850 just the sum of those two items so again whenever we sell inventory we're thinking double journal entry one for money coming in the door and the other for inventory some of our assets walking out the door with our customers debit cash credit sales revenue or debit accounts receivable credit sales revenue depending if it's on account or not for the amount that we received or, or our due and in this case, we sold 30 units at 150 bucks. That's $4,500 worth of inventory. We debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory for the amount that the inventory cost. And that's where this inventory record comes in very handy because that's how we track our cost of goods sold. So our inventory cost of goods sold for August 23rd was $2,850. And there it is in our journal entry. Uh, our last two entries are very similar. August 25th debit inventory credit cash for 870. I'm not going to do that journal entry. August 31st. Let's do that one quickly. Again, very similar layout. Debit cash credit sales, debit cogs credit inventory because we're uh, selling inventory. Uh, so it requires one of those double entries. I sold 24 units at 150 bucks a piece. 24 times 150 equals $3,600 in sales. Our cost of sales is just right here, 18,348. 18,348 is 21,48. So at this point, I'm pretty self-satisfied. We've worked our way through the problem. We've done all the required journal entries. We know our revenues for the month. We know our cost of goods sold for the month just by adding up the entries there. We know a lot about this company's inventory. We've tracked the inventory successfully using the FIFO method. I'll stop this video here and we'll redo the question using the weighted average method.